Good morning, Church, Lighthouse family, and other saints of God who are listening to this message, continuation of the first part of this message, speaking of the clear sound that God is bringing into the earth. We recognized that there are two kingdoms in opposition to each other. Each of these kingdoms have mouthpieces. The systems of this world, the spirit of the Antichrist behind these systems of control have mouthpieces. Just as much as we are to recognize that our flesh, our battle is not against flesh and blood, not against the mouthpieces per se, but against the spirit behind it that we recognize. At the same time, we have to recognize that God is speaking in the earth. And he also does through mouthpieces. Just as much as a horn represents that which is an extension of a beast's strength and a projection of its power, God too extends his strength and exhibits his strength, his authority, his glory through extensions. And God speaks as a mouthpiece through messengers, through trumpets. And these trumpets, as we said, I believe God is raising up true apostles in the earth, which bring a sound from heaven. A clear sound. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 8 says, If the trumpet doesn't sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? And the sound that God is bringing through true apostles, true mouthpieces that have been refined through the fire and have been proven to be reliable, to bring forth the sound and that which God is saying and bringing into the earth will be a clear call. And as we hear this clear call, it is for us to prepare for battle. Now, many of you have done some research and study and looking at the word trumpets or horn. And you will find that in the Old Testament, trumpets were made. They were used for different reasons, different purposes, even of different material. But you will find in Numbers 10 verse 9 that it was the, the sons of Aaron that were instructed to blow the trumpet. Interestingly enough, so they were a division of the, the Levites. But the word Aaron means high mountain. And it is, it is as if God is saying, those that sound the trumpet, those that bring forth the declarations that are hearing from God to bring into the earth a clear sound of what God is speaking, come from the high mountain, are in a position in Christ, seated in Christ, in, in Zion, from which out of Zion will be proclaimed and God is, is using trumpets of gold, so to speak, purified trumpets to sound forth a clear sound. Trumpets would typically be used for various reasons, but some of the primary reason would be to assemble, a call to war, or to march. And I want to tell you, there is a clear call from heaven right now for us to assemble. And for those of you that are still hung up on the assembly as getting together in a church building on Sunday, that is not at all what God is calling us to do. That's not the sound. The sound of assembly is not to do with being gathered in a building. It is being assembled into Christ. There is a difference between gathering and assembling. You can, some of you mechanics out there know, 
you can gather all the car parts there in your garage. You can't start the engine up because unless those car parts have been assembled, correctly assembled, in the right place and fine-tuned for where they should be fitting perfectly aligned for the design. The gathering of the car parts means nothing. Much like those of us who have done any building, you can gather all the bricks and all the building supplies, all the building materials and put it there on site. But you do not have a building. You do not have anything that is fit for any use unless it is assembled. What God is doing in the earth is the assembly into Christ of the parts of his body. And there's a clear sound from heaven coming from God through apostles, through sent ones who are bringing a clear sound from heaven to say, be assembled into Christ. Be assembled in your households. Be assembled under spiritual fathers. This is how God is going to bring his authority and how he's going to establish his authority through the holy nation. Be rightly assembled. There is a clear call. And once we hear this call, once we are in our households as God has arranged us to be, we receive the grace of those fathers, the impartation of those fathers. We receive the protection and the provision that God brings into households because when he speaks to you to be in a house, that's where his provision will come. If you remain outside of that house, if you remain outside of a covering of a spiritual father, do not expect God to provide for you the resources needed to get the job done because God is not yet to supply your agenda. He is doing what he is doing. When the sound comes, we need to heed the call of what God is doing and how he is assembling us into Christ in divine order, in spiritual houses, in tribes, in clans, in households, in families, under spiritual fathers. This is what God is doing in calling us through a clear sound to assemble. And we are assembled in Christ, yes, but we are assembled in arrangement of divine order. And we are in Christ in this mountain, this high mountain of Zion. And he's calling us to march into war. He's calling us to advance the kingdom. But we cannot advance the kingdom. Any of you who have been in the military, in the army, served in any way in, in the armed forces, you understand you cannot march into battle if you're not arranged under, divine, under order so that the, the, the commands can clearly come, the strategy can clearly be, be uh, communicated and those that need to know will know what they need to do to fulfill that. You cannot win a war with everyone running around doing their own thing, saying this and rebelling against this and riling against this and trying to stir up that. What God is doing is a very strategic work and he's going to do it in households, he's going to do it in, in, in tribes, he's going to do it in, in clans, he's going to do it in families with fathers and the instruction from the commander in chief will come clearly through the rank and file, an order in which God has designated that to pass. Not only the provision, but also the instructions will come through those. And God is calling us to pay attention to what he's saying in the earth. We, Isaiah 18 verse 3 says, When a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. And when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. And God is calling us to hear the call. Yes, it's very clear that there are sounds being made by the enemy. That his horns are blowing and trying to establish his systems of control. Global control, systematic control. We hear that sound. But... We are hardwired by the Spirit in us to hear the sound from heaven. Both kingdoms have mouthpieces. But the, the people specifically are not important. The mouthpiece, the horn of the trumpet in itself is not 
as important as it is the message. The mouthpiece has to be an accurate representation to accurately reflect the message. But what is important is the message. And as I have submitted to you in the previous session, I believe God is raising up true apostles to be the mouthpiece, an accurate representation of the message which comes from God by His Spirit, by revelation, that He makes known the secrets of heaven, the secret things that He's revealing in the earth, even the secret strategies that He wants us to align with for what He's doing in the earth now. We must hear the sound clearly and respond to it. Because I believe apostles echo the sound that comes from heaven. It's not the words they say. It's not their cleverness of speech. It's not even their well-worked-out sermons. That's just the earthly sound. If we go to Acts 2 and we see what happened, when they were gathered in the, in the upper room and there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. That sound. The word sound is the word echos, echo. So the sound in itself, the mighty rushing wind. What does that sound in itself, what does that sound accomplish? Nothing. What is the sound of a wind in an upper room accomplish. The sound itself doesn't accomplish anything. But when that sound is echoed in the earth by what God is doing, Peter stands up and echoes that sound and 3,000 souls come under, come into the kingdom. That is the echo of a sound. And so in the earth, God always speaks, but when that is echoed, when that is echoed, it is the demonstration of the sound. And we will see that in scripture. When there's an earthquake in prison with Peter, it's because God is shaking something else and loosening from something else. It is the echo. So it's not just the mouthpiece, it's not just the sound, it is the echo that God is bringing in, in the earth. Two things I'm saying. Don't be concerned so much about the horns of the spirit of this world. Be concerned of the spirit. What is, what is the spirit behind it? Don't focus on the natural. Don't focus on the person. And just as much as the trumpet that brings the sound from heaven, Sam Solon, for instance, as flesh and blood, is not more valuable. He's a son of God, just like all of us are. He himself is not the important thing. The fact that God has an instrument through which he can speak clearly is important because that sound is echoed accurately. And that's what we must hear, the message of what God is saying. As God is, and recognize it. Honor the sound through men that have been refined in body and mind to speak clearly. But the sound must be clear. The sound must be clear. What God is saying will be echoed through trumpets. And we must hear what God is saying. Assembled into Christ. Gathered for war. Instructions coming clearly through those that God has appointed, even as mouthpieces. Not pay attention to the things happening in the natural. Not paying attention to try and come against the flesh and blood of the systems that we see emerging. But be very aware of the spirit behind the systems of this world. The spirit that wants to entrap the souls of men who are given to the spirit of this world. But we bring a different message. We do not address these things as the world does, nor do we address them as the carnal minded ones. Once we've come to repentance, we address these things with the mind of God, with clear instructions from heaven, echoed into the earth, into the, into the church and into the earth of what God is doing. 
we bring a different message. We bring a message of peace with authority to destroy any authority of the enemy to bring chaos. And when this church, and as this church is emerging, it will threaten the systems of this world. When Jesus came and he brought the kingdom of God into earth, it threatened the systems of the world. It threatened the Jewish religious systems. It threatened the political systems. It threatened Rome. It threatened Pontius Pilate. But ultimately, when Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, he said, you have no authority over me. What I'm doing, I'm doing by the authority of my Father. You can do nothing unless my Father allow it. And we can be so confident and assured when we are in alignment with what God is doing and how God is doing it, what God is saying, we operate by authority to bring peace whereby the systems of this world will have no authority over us. And God is starting to prepare his church. He's starting to clean house. He's starting to expose the inaccurate representation of him. He's, he's starting to expose false prophets because he's making his church ready. Judgment will begin in the house of God because it is his church that will be the instrument by which his purposes are fulfilled. He will not allow a church that is an inaccurate representation of him to do that which he brings about because he will bring it about through the church being an accurate representation of him. So he is judging in the house. He's removing every fake representation of him. Every false voice that is not accurately aligned with not only what God is saying, but the character of life that carries a clear message. Every fake false prophet, no matter, I'm telling you, no matter how good their messages are, no matter how good their sermons are or their TV shows, if they are after riches, if they are after fame and fortune and operate by the same spirit of this world, if they are after the same things that the spirit of this world has ensnared us by our souls, they cannot be a clear sound. I don't care how much you love that sweet person that says most wonderful things on television or wherever you follow them. I'm warning you, do not listen to strange voices. If their life is not an accurate representation of what, who God is, if they've not free from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life, if they're not free from contamination, if they're still seeking after and pursuing the things that the world is, self-enrichment and all these other things, God is going to judge it and don't you be fooled. By those voices because no matter how good their messages are they do not echo what heaven is saying they cannot echo and and God is dealing with the false in the church even the harlot do you know what a harlot is a harlot in the church is it is is the church part that has sold itself to the systems of this world that has sold itself to be popular in the systems of this world, whether it be financial, whether it be political, whether it be whatever gain that people can get from the systems of this world, when the church sells itself for that, I'm talking about those that are false representations, that is the harlot. And God will expose it and God will deal with it. Because those who speak for God are refined. So that there's nothing of self to distort the sound from heaven. And so what is assembled into Christ is the true church that carries the authority from heaven to go to war and overcome the spirit 
behind the systems of this world. How can that which is sold out to the systems of this world, and I'm talking about church systems, religious systems, showmanship and franchises and TV shows that is sold itself out to pursue the things that the world pursues, fame, fortune, whatever. How can that which has sold itself to the systems of this world be used by God to overcome the spirit behind the systems of this world? God is raising up his true church and he's dealing with those things. Those who have ears to hear, hear what heaven is echoing. Those who have ears to hear what God is saying, pay attention to what he's saying. Repent from anything that is a pursuit in our own strength to say we got to come against the mouthpieces. We got to come against what we see in the natural. We got to rally against it. We got to rile against it. We got to revolt against it. What God is calling us to do is to become the church that he's raising up that will overcome. He's cleaning house and he's raising up voices that will be an echo from heaven. The trumpet sound of God will be clear and the church will overcome. And the God of heaven will soon crush Satan under our feet. I'm going to leave you here. We only took 20 odd minutes. But I think what you're hearing and what we have to repent of is much weightier than having to take a long message with a lot of information. I want us, Lighthouse, I want us, Lighthouse family, not institution, not organization, not even ministry. Lighthouse family, those of the house that God is placed in, in the earth. My spiritual house, the tribes, the clans, the families in the earth. Those who are assembled into Christ under divine authority and have aligned yourself to hear clearly what God is saying. Hear what God is saying. And God will give the strategy and the direction for the church. And even though for a time it looks like the systems of this world will have the upper hand, God is raising up his church. And we spoke about the role of trials and all these things in bringing forth the purity. God is at work and we're part of it. If this is a bit of a heavy message for you, chew on it, all of us. Need to renew our minds, need to repent, need to think differently in alignment with what God is doing and saying. Because the sound from heaven is a clear sound. God bless you.